um, and ask uh, for approval of the minutes at, they were presented to you in your email. If uh, you need a couple of minutes to, to take a look at them again, I'll, I'll do so, but uh, I'd entertain a motion to accept the minutes as, uh, as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor of uh, approving the minutes as uh, presented in your materials indicate by saying aye. 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 Same sign for no. Uh, minutes approved. Okay, uh, Christina, you want to start with the uh, board vacancies and where we stand with filling those open position, open spots? So not surprisingly, we still have an open spot for a mental health practitioner. And I know this is an ongoing um, discussion we have. Uh, I talked to the city clerk again just today. Um, there have been no new applicants um, and definitely none that meet the criteria that the board has set forth um, and that the ordinance sets forth. So um, I have talked multiple times to um, multiple individuals in the mental health community, and I will keep sending that application out. Um, Otherwise, I, I have no one so far. I don't know if anyone else has gotten any hits or anyone even somewhat interested. Is comprehensive or comprehensive mental health services, are they the only organization in independence? So we are in their catchment area. Um, so they are the the major game in town. Um, you know, as funding goes, they're funded to serve this region and Eastern Jackson and parts of Eastern Jackson County. Um, so they are the, the biggest major player. Of course, there's private practices um, in town also, but nothing to comprehensive or Burrell's size. Um, we've had multiple meetings with comprehensive. So um, I, I keep asking if they know of anyone or if anyone with their group would like to. Um, I, I get, I'm told that people are interested, just no one is actually applying. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> Bit frustrating. Uh, nonetheless, um, if there's no new, uh, any other discussion on that, why don't we move to updates on COVID, RSV, and flu? The trifecta. I can give a little bit of an update. I know Dr. Morris is not on this call. Um, and if need be, I'm sure um, I have on my call right now, our public health manager, Lauren Campbell. She's also an epidemiologist. Um, so she's here to correct me um, when I make all the mistakes here on the report. Um, so COVID numbers are down and they're continuing to go down. They are not going down drastically, but they are down. Um, I believe she said uh, 67 cases per 100,000 for the week, um, which is under that 70 threshold. So, I mean, they are good. They are much better than they were just two months ago when we met. Our flu numbers are, are also way down. Um, RSV is not reportable to us, so we only hear about them in passing when we get reports from Centerpoint um, or from Children's Mercy whenever they let us know. We know that there is still a ton of respiratory going around, and I'm sure it's it's what Centerpoint is reporting that they're seeing a ton of. It's what all the hospitals in the area, the area and the doctor's offices are seeing. Um, good news, bad news. Um, you know, the numbers are down that are reportable that are going into the hospitals. We know anecdotally that a lot of People are still positive. They're just not reporting those positive cases because they're doing like COVID tests at home um, and their cases are not bad enough for them to need to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. So they just stay home and take care of themselves until they're better and ready to come in. So um, do you, do you Lauren, know what the, yeah? do you know what the inpatient census for COVID is at center point currently? I do not. I'm going to put Lauren on the spot. I don't think Lauren knows either, but I will ask. I do not know. I know I haven't been receiving as many inpatient hospitalizations as I was before. I was just getting ER reports today, but otherwise I don't know.
Sorry, Jason White was late, but I'm here. Welcome, Jason. We were just discussing COVID, RSV, and flu. Any other news on, on that front? If not, I skipped over the staffing update. Christina, if you want to jump in and provide that information yeah. for those on the call. Um, so we are still trying to hire staff. Um, we actually have interviews tomorrow for a nursing position. Um, I mean, the good news is on the health side, grants continue to roll in. We just got um, another one sent to us from the state this week uh, for increasing our workforce. And there's another one that has been promised to us that should come by May for building public health infrastructure. Um, they're all for essentially increasing our our workforce levels, increasing our staffing, increasing training for staff, which is all wonderful. A lot of it has quite the COVID bent to it, which would have been really nice, of course, um, you know, two to three years ago. But um, better late than never. Uh, we're using one of the grants to actually hire licensed clinical social workers uh, to do, you know, the ARCH program, the, med you know, the co-responder program with the paramedics. Um, we are launching that again. Um, and so we finally have funding to hire licensed clinical social workers. Um, we're looking at two of them. Hopefully they'll be starting um, March. I can't promise that, but that is what we are hoping for. We have quite a few applicants, so we're very happy and they're, they on paper look very, very qualified. Um, so we're really excited to be able to start that. Um, the staff, the staff are passionate and happy and enthusiastic and they're working on a ton of things. So it's, it's lovely. It's, but some of those uh, basic things like getting nurses in, um, continuing to do clinics, you know, of course, we received the same news um, that everybody else did that the Biden administration is looking to end, you know, the some of the pandemic rules. So um, COVID vaccines, we're expecting that we will have to start paying for them like everybody else um, this spring um, or summer. And so we will have to start billing insurance and going through that like everyone else because we won't have funding to do it otherwise. So we are looking to try to get all of that set up. Um, and be ready the best we can. So, Christina, for these positions that are grant found, funded, what's the duration of the grant? And then, as always the case, um, what's the evaluation piece? And at some point, that the city has to take these on or decide to eliminate those. Is is there a rubric that will be applied to these so that we can provide a recommendation? Well. Um, so the grants have different lengths. Um, some of them go through um, next January. Some of them go through next summer. Um, and I don't know about the newest one that hasn't come to us yet. I don't know what the length of time they're looking at there. Um, I will admit that there is some concern about, you know, once we get these things up, how are we going, going to continue funding them? Um, we do have some opioid dollars that have come in from different settlements. Um, which I have requested be set aside to help fund these positions after the grant funds run out. So it appears right now that we'll be able to fund them at least for several years. My hope is then once they're an established thing that we'll be able to continue going after either grants or that the city will have another good plan come forward to fund these. Um, the city's moving towards a new budgeting system where we are actually going to be part of the little trial period where we are going to go through and put in our budget, put in all of our services, and then have it evaluated by how closely it aligns with the strategic plan. Um, I mean, a lot of these things are absolutely straight out of the strategic plan when it comes to mental health. So my hope is that, you know, the council and the city manager's office and the public will be able to see how important these are and that these are real services that we would like to continue funding. I also know the city's not in a great position funding wise, so, you know, I am doing everything I can to find other funding sources to back these up and keep them going for as long as I can. 
Um, I should also add, we it's not a grant per se, but we are partnering with St. Louis University on um, receiving Narcan. So they actually shipped our Narcan and we should get it probably next week. Um, and we'll be able to have free Narcan that we can go ahead and distribute to members of our community. Um, so we are excited for that to happen and to be able to start doing that and doing everything we can to try to help all of the different aspects. We finished our community health assessment. Um, we are wrapping up trying to do the final draft of it. So I'd hope to be able to share it with you guys, but I, yeah. I just have a really rough draft right now. Um, but I can tell you that mental health issues, gun violence, um, you know, affordable housing. Lauren, help me out. What else am I forgetting? Homelessness and drug use, I think, were the top ones. They're all part of the top five um, that people ranked as issues, public health issues that they're concerned about here in Independence. And I also know that the city has out a budget survey right now. Um, and when I looked last, um, health department issues are at the highest um, ranking right now for the budget. So I'm hoping if we have enough data, we can ensure good funding to continue these programs. Because I'll be honest, that community health assessment, City of Independence did not perform well in comparison to other jurisdictions and the state and the nation as a whole. When you talk about distributing Narcan to uh, the community, what, uh, what individuals are you targeting to uh, uh, have Narcan on premises or on themselves? Honestly, we're targeting anyone who believes that they may need it. Um, the grant is specifically written that it is to be for members of the public. Um, there's separate grants that are for first responders. Um, we're also with the ARCH program, the co-responder program, we're planning on making sure that there's flyers to hand out um, that they can distribute to those that they meet and they come across during their visits that they believe may benefit from it, family members who may benefit from having it there on site. Um, you know, we have a lot of staff who've already indicated that they would like to have it. Um, as long as they're, you know, members of our, our community, we are more than willing to provide that. Um, we don't want to limit it. Um, so, we want to do are everything there, we can. Yeah. Are there uh, certain locations, businesses, where people that are in that drug culture tend to congregate that should have that on premises? Other than individual homes. Um, I will definitely work with our police and our fire to identify those. Um, one of the things that we agreed to do is that anytime we have events and we're out and about, we are more than willing to have it there with us to pass out. The only thing we're required to keep track of are how many boxes we hand out and to ha how many individuals. Um, we're getting essentially train the trainer training coming up. Uh, so we'll be able to train individuals on how to properly use it. Um, <clears throat> You know, we are also going to gather zip code data just because we would like to have zip code data, but it's not a requirement. So we're going to keep track and figure out where we should be. Honestly, I don't think everybody knows all of those answers. Um, we know it's a problem. We know it's a problem across independence. It's a problem across our region. And the closest place for most people to go get Narcan um, is, I believe North Kansas City Hospital is the closest one if they want to just go try to get it for free. Um, and that's outside of where a lot of our residents can go easily. Sorry, can you repeat your question, Dr. Muleman? It says, where will be the distribution I think he said, where would these distribution points be? I, if I'm, yeah, if I caught it. That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know why it's not coming through more clearly. You're fine. So um, we will have it at City Hall. 
and then we will have it whenever we go out to different events, whether they're events. Well, they go out to different events with the city, um, whether it's to Uptown Market or, you know, events out at different parks and facilities. Um, so they'll be taking it whenever they go out and about uh, to have it there to be able to distribute. We can't just, of course, leave it places. It has to be there where our staff are there so that they can make sure that they not only record um, all the information properly, but they provide the training. But we will always have it there at City Hall unless we run out, but they've promised us that we'll have very quick turnaround if we need to reorder. So this is the layman's question. How long is that? What's the shelf life for it? It's a really good question too. I want to say it's a couple of years. Lauren, I know we have some there on site. I don't know off the top of my head. Let me see if I can find out. Well, that that's answers that's 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 it's a couple of years. It's like better than your EpiPens and things like that. So is that something that we as a school district can maybe get some? We have some, but our SROs are telling us that um, what's out there right now is very potent and sometimes takes multiple doses. And if we had multiple students, I wouldn't mind having a little bit extra in our high schools, middle yeah. schools. You are a member of our community. And so as soon as we get some, we would be more than willing to provide it to you or any other member of our community who comes forward. So if you have a couple of, if you have a couple who want to come, we'll hand it out. Super. Thank you. We can even maybe do a little mini event at your school and bring some and then get it distributed quickly that way. And I've trained my staff on it, but if we could have a formal training from the health department, that would be fabulous. We can do that. And I know Medical Reserve Corps also has um, individuals that are trained to provide that training too. So we okay. can make sure it happens. Super. Thank you. Any other questions? So, Christina, what I'm hearing you say is that uh, for our next meeting, you will have the data from the community health assessment to present to us at that time, key findings um, from it um, and implications. Does that have, um, does that have a, a, a implications piece to it or is it just here's your data and then it's for you to interpret? Um. So they've spent a lot of time taking not only the data, but matching it up with different things that not only, um, you know, outside data that we have, but things that the city can address, things that we're already working on addressing, what needs to be possibly looked at. We're going to, in April, we're scheduled to go speak before the council and present the community health assessment to them at that time. You know, normally the next steps after a community health assessment is to hold a meeting to do a community health improvement plan. Um, so we would invite stakeholders to come look at the data with us and give us insight on what they think we should go forward with. That's of course something in the past, I believe the last time we did it, the Board of Health was invited to come and be part of that discussion. Um, and so at that point, we come up with a plan of action on how we're going to address all of these things, or at least some of them. There's a lot, there's a lot there and there's a lot that we don't necessarily have control over, um, but that definitely needs to be brought to light. Other questions for anybody? Um, well, yeah, maybe there's a question I had from an earlier discussion, but with the New year starting now, uh, federal funds. Is Paxlovid still covered or is that rolled off for COVID treatment, Paxlovid? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I can try to find out. I know it's still being discussed, but I'm not sure. Um, I have a feeling that it's still going on, but it may change drastically with the administration's change in uh, essentially the pandemic. Oh, and in fact, here comes Dr. Nelson is joining us. Good evening, Dr. Nelson. Hello, it's Daryl. <clears throat> Hello. 
you may be able to answer this question because I couldn't. Um, Paxlovid. What's that? Um, Paxlovid to treat yeah. COVID. Is it still uh -huh. covered under um, all the COVID regulations and the pandemic? The federal yeah, grants? so far it is. So far, as far as I know, it has continued to be. As you know, it's uh, more for outpatient use. Generally, when we admit patients, we transition to remdesivir, uh, which we use inpatient in the in the IV format. Um, but I have have heard some of our primary care physicians still using it um, periodically. They're continuing to monitor the evolution of the variants, as you know, and trying to quantify the impact. The last CDC uh, update call we were on last Tuesday um, gave some updates on um, testing protocols and talked about a couple of the oral agents. And the recommendation still was, at least for patients with uh, risk factors, to continue um, considering oral treatment if um, they become positive. So, And we'd had a question earlier about um, how the hospital is dealing with COVID, RSV, flu. Could you answer that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Glad to. Um, we are looking at our more typical census numbers. Uh, I would say now for the past couple of weeks for center point, that's typically around 200 to two, 230 to 250 inpatients. Um, and we've seen a significant drop off in our flu positive um, cases as well as our RSV cases. We've continued to see intermittent inconsistent COVID numbers from the mid teens uh, on the low side to the 30s on the high side. I was on the citywide CMO call last week and most of the health systems were reporting a, a generally downward turn um, in their overall inpatient COVID numbers um, and had also reported like we're seeing essentially um, much less RSV and a trending downward of influenza. So we're managing in an overall census okay. Uh, we're still struggling, struggling like all of the hospitals um, in the metro, um, particularly with night staffing. And so we um, have to manage our bed capacity for our overall census to be able to anticipate what happens with our, our night staffing challenges. If we didn't have our night staffing challenges, we'd have a little bit more flexibility. So we are still struggling for any of you on the phone who've heard or have had to use our uh, facility with um, holds in the emergency room waiting to get beds. And it all has to do with this kind of sequencing through um, the hospital, um, having to manage against lower um, staffing numbers um, on the night shift. So um, there's still just a lot of consternation about kind of where the industry is going to ultimately settle back in after you know, not just the pandemic, but the great resignation that followed. So um, it's had a very real impact on us. And as I understand it, it has a lot of industries, but um, we're still feeling the impact of that. But for the most part, able to manage near, near or close to our normal census uh, numbers. So. Thank you. You're welcome. So, We're all hoping for uh, longer days and a little more sunshine and maybe getting on the backside at least of the seasonal run here and um, hoping for some a little more relief as we get into spring. But it does feel like it is trending that way, at least right now. So I think when we had our last meeting, I mentioned the thought about some possibility of kind of a biphasic seasonal event uh, where there was some thought of maybe a little bit of a second uh, uptick um, in the seasonal illnesses here in the month of February. And so far, at least, we're not seeing that trend yet, albeit we're just a few days into the month. We can all hope for the best. <laughs> Absolutely. We're, we're ready for any relief we can get. Exactly. Yeah. Christine, anything else uh, for the good of the order you'd like to share? Um, next meeting date? Um, it will be April, and I am looking right now. It appears it will be April 6th. Great. Great. Um, anybody have uh, anything else uh, they'd like to address? If not, I'll, I'll uh, ask for somebody to call for adjournment. So moved. 
Second. Second. All those in favor of adjournings, indicate by saying aye. Yep. Aye. Hey, Thank folks, you, everybody. Thanks for your time. Good night. All right. Okay. Goodbye. Thanks, Christina.